This is Hexatech, 17 pounds of absolute gaming potage. Here's a tour around the entire PC. This is a central processing unit, or CPU. It is a brain of the entire PC and performs the billions of calculations needed in modern day computers. Hexatech sports the Intel i7-6700K, which is clocked by default at 4 GHz, meaning it can perform 4 billion calculations per second. While processors are normally clocked below their maximum potential to avoid hardware malfunctions, this processor has been overclocked to 4.4 GHz, allowing to perform better and more intense tasks. CPUs tend to heat up when they're being used more, meaning it requires a lot of cooling. To remedy this, we have a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo air cooler, which provides the CPU with cool air to keep it from overheating. Since this is a gaming PC, we need a powerful graphics card to handle the newest games. The graphics card is like a processor, except dedicated only to displaying pixels, calculating collisions, gravity, and physics in-game. For this, we have the EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 Superclocked, a variant of Nvidia's card, the top-of-the-line graphics card, which has more than enough computing power to handle any game you throw at it. The i7-6700K and the GTX 1070 are an excellent team and are both powerful enough to maximize gaming potential. Now onto the RAM or random access memory. This is the computer's tool belt, used to store temporary data about programs, games, and the operating system. The 16GB of G-School RAM in this build is running 2.4GHz and is of the type DDR4, which is currently the fastest on the market. Graphics cards also have RAM, called VRAM, although it usually runs at ludicrously fast speeds. Next, let's talk about storage. Storage is like the computer's toolbox. It is slower than RAM, but there's a lot more of it. This is where the computer's operating system, games, programs, and files are stored when they are not in use. In this build, we have a 1TB hard drive which can store over 1 trillion bits of data. However, since this is a hard drive, it uses a spinning magnetic disk to store data, which is not the fastest method. To remedy this, there is also a 256GB solid state drive, or SSD, which uses much faster electronic storage instead of moving parts, making it the ideal location to install your operating system so your computer will boot up fast. The reason that SSDs are not exclusively used in this build is due to price. A 1TB SSD will set you back around $300, while a hard drive of the same capacity will only cost around $50. This makes a mix of the two a great balance between speed, space, and price. Now we go to the power supply. This is often overlooked, but is absolutely essential. If one component in your PC fails, it can be replaced. However, if the power supply fails, it is very possible that the rest of your system could be destroyed along with it. In this build, a Corsair 430 watt power supply, which is very reputable, is being used. Now onto the big one, the motherboard. Every single one of the components in this build connects to the motherboard. It is the hub for all communication. Major components on the motherboard are the CPU socket, where the processor goes, the PCIe slots, where the graphics card connects, the SATA ports, where the storage connects, and the VRMs, or voltage regulator modules, which control the flow of power from the power supply. For this build, we use the MSI Tomahawk AC, which is an Intel motherboard chipset and also has the added bonus of onboard Wi-Fi. And now to house this monster, we have a Corsair Carbide Series Spec O2 mid-tower case. While you may think the case is only about aesthetics, it is also essential for the performance of your PC. The case regulates airflow so the heat will be dissipated from the system at an adequate rate. It's good to know Hexatech utilizes the top-of-the-line equipment, but how does it run, you ask? Take a look. <coughs>
How did you know what parts you needed for your PC? And how did you know they'd work together? Great question. I knew which parts I needed for my PC um, because I've watched many videos on the newest parts. I stayed up to date. I read many articles about parts that are very important, such as the graphics card, things that you know you really need to make sure you get right. And then I put those in PC Part Picker to make sure they work together. PCPartPicker.com, it's a free service. They do compatibility checks for the parts that you choose. They let you choose them really quickly in a list format. They organize all the parts you could want for a certain section uh, based on factors that you choose, such as the storage, power consumption, things like that. Uh, they also find the lowest price for the part that you pick and let you buy it in one go. Um, it's really great. Were there any struggles that you encountered when building uh, Hexatech? Yes. Um, when I was building Hexatech, I had a couple problems. Well, because I was a first time PC builder, I did need some help trying to get the CPU uh, cooler on because I had an aftermarket CPU cooler. And uh, I needed somebody else to help me with holding that. That took me most of the time with my PC. Um, another thing was I did not plug in the CPU power for on the motherboard for the CPU socket. Uh, there's a separate power cable that needs to be plugged into the motherboard for that, and it was very hard. I hurt my hand a lot trying to get it into my case right there. Uh, that took a long time. Also, uh, because I opted to do cable management to make the exterior of my PC, the window side panel, look really nice, I had to, I had to tr attempt to do cable management, and then I also had to cram the rest whatever I felt too lazy to do behind the back plate and that took that was that was that was a rush are there any tips that you have for future PC builders uh, some tips that I recommend for future PC builders and new time people uh, is to use pcpartpicker.com I talked about it before it's free um, also, you should watch tech videos on how to build a PC, just like overview videos. Austin Evans, who's a tech tuber, made a great video called How to Build a Gaming PC 2016. It just goes over the broad steps as to, you know, mounting the motherboard in, plugging in some cables, common things that you need to worry about. And I really think that those kind of things will really help you. Also, uh, to be a future PC builder, you have to make sure you can think on the fly. For example, for me, uh, one of my cables wouldn't be able to stretch uh, to one to the other side of my case using the back side, so I had to hide it behind another part to make it work properly. And it's just about you know things that you can think. There are always going to be clearance issues that PC Part Picker can't find, but you got to be able to you know problem solve and figure out the best way to do something. Otherwise, I think building a PC was pretty simple. It seemed intimidating, but really, if you try it, it's pretty simple if you, you know, have taken a tech ed class or something.